GPS receivers, actually GNSS receivers, can be cheap, like really super cheap, less than 10 bucks for the unit and can be expensive, 60, 70, even more bucks and we are still talking only about the RC Hobby grade GPS receivers. Majority of the GPS GNSS receivers put on the GPS equipped drones are rather from this cheap family. So usually you will get the Baytian BN180 or the copy or just branded Betian 180 on 220 and um, people quite often are complaining that this is not really working like it should be because for example you enable the VTX the GPS is not working and this is a topic I already covered. And back then I said that there is a difference between cheap and the pricey GPS receiver and a few months later I decided that it's time to share the results of some of the experiments I've been running with the GNSS receivers. I used my favorite, you might know those boards uh, because those are exactly the same hardware I'm using to wrench test different uh, radio receivers, uh, to test the GNSS receivers how good the fix is available on them, how well the position estimation is working and how much it takes to get the solid fix. The rules of those tests were pretty simple. I have a board with the ESP32 and the GNSS receiver connected. When I turn the board on, it just starts to listen to what the GNSS receiver says and measures the time it's required to get the fix and displays the time on the OLED screen. On top of that, it measures HDOP, horizontal dilution of precision. The lower the HDOP, the better the position estimate returned by the GNSS. I tested multiple Multiple, yes. Multiple GNSS receivers. Those were Baytian BN180, Baytian BN220, Baytian BN880, Matek Sam MQ8, Matek MQ M8Q5883, the one with the uh, GNSS. And anything else? Let me quickly take a look at the data and no. That's all. And now let me show you the data. But before I show you the data, a few words about the testing procedure. I was testing both the hot start and the cold start. Hot start is the situation when GNSS receiver still has most of the data required to get the fix. It has the ephemerides, no switch satellites it should see. It has almost everything. It also have to find a few satellites and return the estimation. And this is usually a pretty straightforward and fast process. I was also testing for the cold start when there is no ephemerides information stored in the GPS module and it has to get full almanac of where each satellite is. This is called the cold start. So we will be measuring both the best hot start and we will be measuring for the worst cold start. So we know how much for the GNSS receiver will take in the worst case scenario to get the first fix. And trust me, the difference is huge. Because the best case scenario with the hot start is 3 seconds. Worst case scenario, an hour can pass and you still do not have any valid fix. On top of that, we will be measuring the best and the average HDOP recorded over several uh, measurements. So if for example during the one measuring cycle the best HDOP was 88, we stored 88. If on the second measurement then the best was 90, we have 88 and 90 and we get the average of two values which is 89. And now let's go to the presentation. As I mentioned already, I have tested Baytian BN180, Baytian BN220, Baytian BN880, Matek SAM M8Q and Matek M8Q5883. 
3. I have picked the units on completely random. I have a full stack of different GPS modules and I just picked one second, five different modules, solder them to two different uh, measurement unit and let them run. In some of the places you see the values on the gray. The gray means that uh, in this case this unit was not able to get to the conditions of this row within one hour. If it crossed one hour then disqualification we are not measuring this one. And it's time for the data analysis. First category, best horizontal dilution of precision. The award goes to Matek M8Q5883. We just had the best of the five. The worst one goes to BN180, which is interesting because in theory BN180 and 220 should have the same antenna. However, in my test they behaved completely different and this category is only the second. And uh, everything else was basically almost in the middle. Worst one, 180 best M8Q5883. Average horizontal dilution of precision. One more time, the award goes to Matek M8Q5883. And the worst result goes to BN220. Why? One more time, in theory it should be the same as the 180, but it isn't. Beatian 880 and some MHQ, the one without the magnetometer, behaved very similar. We will kinda skip the section of the best 6 sat fix, best 8 sat fix and the best 10 sat fix uh, because the data is really very comparable, the differences are really slow. We are talking either about 3 seconds or 5 seconds for the war. So this is not really very interesting. However, it gets uh, slightly more interesting when we go into the best 12 sats fix. And here the worst one turned out to be Beitian 180 and the best one was the Matek some M8Q. Interesting? Interesting. More than how much? Uh, six? Five times as more time the 180 needed in the best case than the Matex one. And the data that is really interesting is the worst time required to get the amount of fixes. We have the 12S, let's begin from the bottom. 12S, well, there was at least one case when every of those GPS, GNSS receivers failed to get to the 12 uh, satellites tracking here on my workbench be below the roof. Sorry, disqualification. And interestingly, in the all three cases, remaining three cases, worst time for six seconds, eight seconds, and ten, ten sats, not seconds, the winner is Beitian B8880. We still have to wait quite a long of time in some of the cases, but those were the best numbers of them all. Here I think the, the reason that 880 is the best in case of the worst uh, worst time uh, is because it just has the biggest antenna and there is a biggest chance that it can get the Almanach and Ephemerides from all the satellites around. So yes, 880 will give you most probably the best times in the worst case scenario. And the losers, unfortunately, are 180 for the category of 10 sats fix and uh, 220 for the category of 6 sats fix. And look at the 220 once it failed even to get to the 8 sats or the 10 sats. And the Matek boards are, uh, are somewhere in the middle. And surprise, surprise. The best HDOP was indeed returned by the most expensive GNSS in this test, Matek M8Q5883, which is like three or four times as expensive as the cheapest in the comparison. So there is a difference. On the topic of the hot start, it's really hard to find any, any argument that says that the more expensive GNSS is better than the cheap one. Because the hot start is really the simplest situation ever and the hot start 
if if the hot start is the only thing that you are interested in there is absolutely no problem however with the cold start it's slightly more interesting story because i think yes uh, more expensive give you better cold star situation especially when there is a lot of rf noise around and you have a roof all the tests were performed here on my desk and uh, not on the outside well probably the cold star of every of those uh, modules will be exactly the same yes the better antenna better filters better tune do make a difference when the gnss receiver has to get the full set of the data had to get the ephemerides have to get the almanac had to get everything to be able to return to the fix so yes yes uh, my recommendation is that yes you should buy bigger better and more expensive gnss receivers if you are interested in anything more than just getting a fix only during the sunny day on the open meadow and every other situation there is a practical difference that's all for today thank you very much for watching happy flying